Should I help my parents who abandoned us? My father left me and my bro when we were three and two. Mom married again and had another child when I was seven. Since then my bro and I were ignored then abandoned so both parents can start new families of their own. She started abandoning us when she sold all our stuff, game console, scooter, skates, and all our toys, and would ask her friends or relatives to shelter us, temporarily, say two weeks, but never picked us up until they send us back to her and she would send us elsewhere. Most of the time I was split from my bro. Meanwhile, her new family get to live a normal life with my half-siblings pretending my bro and I did not exist. I don't remember any of my relatives intervening as our family had a falling out after my mom's parents died. Living with strangers to strangers, I was abused, by a neighbor and they didn't know, mistreated every day, constantly reminded of my worthlessness, and physically punished. My education was never a priority so I was barely allowed to join any extracurricular activities. I'd receive verbal abuse for asking money for school trips and projects. I can't count the number of times I had to plea to the school head to allow me to take the exams without paying the tuition fee. Had to get used to these embarrassments at a young age. We did a lot to survive like when we had no money our water utility was cut off and we rigged the water meter so we can have water at night for chores. I was freezing outside holding the pipes to keep it from leaking. We sold scrap metal and bottles for food because they left us alone in the house with no money. Or just slept hungry. Almost every weekend for months they would send me to my abuser to work on chores, and she will send me back with some money and groceries. Had a real job when I was 18 and moved out when I was 19. I will never forget my first paycheck, I bought a washing machine as a surprise for the household. To show their appreciation, I was beaten and verbally abused for buying it instead of handing them the money. I was stunned and cried to sleep on my work clothes. That washing machine still works and bought them a new one last January. Having no parental figure, I was navigating life handicapped and alone. I lacked skills that parents usually teach their kids like household stuff, driving, etc. The only person that knew of my situation, XGF, used it to abuse me so I never told anyone else in person. I lived alone in a tiny studio for years. Worked night shifts so I can study at the uni during mornings. Lots of days with no sleep for over 24 hours straight. One night I was so sick with fever I thought I was gonna die in my apartment alone. Unfortunately, I didn't. All this messed up my education and I'd say even have emotional scars, lack of confidence, lone wolf mentality, inability to keep serious relationships, etc. Because I experienced some things too early and some too late compared to normal kids. Had suicidal thoughts from age 21 to 26. Sought therapy but I couldn't afford to maintain the treatment. Lots of frustrations, missed holidays, uncelebrated birthdays, and bad relationships later, I somehow managed to pull through and now have a well-paying job, never wanting things I can't afford, and relatively successful compared to people my age, 28M. I am currently living with my younger brother as he's not as lucky as I am and cannot stand on his own feet yet. A few years ago, they reached out. I met with them, individually, and help out a bit from time to time, financing a car, household appliances, added capital to mom's business that failed months later, half-siblings education, sent money, etc. My mom is good at manipulating to get the most out of me. Pulling off, this might be my last birthday, or, this might be the last time I see you. I'd send them holiday and birthday presents but I'd get nothing. Hurts a bit, but I try not to mind. I help them out of guilt because they're still family. Despite the wounds that will never heal. I was just happy to have made it through the worst and try to forget about it and sometimes pretend I grew up a normal kid. The problem is, reason for this long post, is that they're wanting more and more. Both parents, in their mid-fifties, are not in good health and will probably be incapable of working soon. They want me to take care of my younger half-siblings and rescue them from their financial, and medical, troubles. Assuming I am capable of carrying that weight, it is still too much. Is it not enough that they deprived me of my childhood and now they want to ruin my adult life? I am already experiencing this ruin by being reluctant to start my own family for fear of ending up just like them. I want to say no, but I might not be able to handle the guilt. Especially because I do not want my half-siblings to experience the hell their older brothers went through. And I can't deal with the thought of my parents dying because I refuse to help. But it's just so unfair to me. Sorry for the long post. Will take all the advice I can get. Too long did not read.
Parents abandoned us when we were kids and recently came back to our lives asking to be rescued from their failures. Should I help? Edit. Sorry, I kept saying step-sibling, I meant half-siblings. I am related to them by blood. E-D-I-T-2. Some days I wish that this decision will be made for me. If my parents die, I could use the insurance money to provide for all siblings. The money would probably be worth just a year of my current net income but should be enough to put my half-sister through college then she could help me raise the younger one. Honestly, that's the best guilt-free scenario I could think of. Don't give them shit, they abandoned you and deserve nothing. You have to cut them out of your life. They are toxic and the only way for you and your brother to move on and heal is to not have it in your life anymore. For once, concentrate on yourself. You owe them nothing. Think about that for a minute. You can't help others if you're drowning yourself. The step-siblings are not yours don't let them dump them on you. Take care of your brother and move forward. They literally made their own bed, it's okay to let them lay in it. Stop sending money right now. The money you send it's not going to help anyone. My opinion. Use the money you'd give to your family for more therapy for you and your brother. They abandoned you. You abandoning them is basically karma at this point. Stop wasting money on them. You have every right to say no. You went through so much shit at such a young age. They don't deserve anything from you. They don't even have the right to ask you for anything. They abandoned you from the get-go. I believe it is wise for you to just live and do what's best for you. They never care for you and they only came to you once they know they can't work anymore. They only want you in their life because you are financially beneficial to them. Help your siblings in ways that you can without ever letting your parents have reach of the money. Never give money if they need money for school trips or school money write out checks for the school. My mother was similar to yours. I tried for decades to make peace with her and the family situation it caused me a no end of mental health issues trying to get her to be a mother. One day I gave up the ghost, went into therapy and I have not seen or spoken to her since. It is the very best thing that I ever did for myself. Break free let them live in their own squalor. I, 33F, am struggling to work peacefully with my, developmentally delayed, co-worker, 27F. Please help me. I have zero experience working with someone who is delayed. I'm going to go ahead and pre-apologize for anything I say that comes off as offensive. I swear my intentions are good, and I like my co-worker. I'm just struggling to work alongside her. I'll keep this short and try to only present the facts. I started working at a father, daughter-owned company in April. When I arrived on my first day, the daughter was there. Although I didn't know that for a while because she didn't introduce herself. Or talk to me at all. By the end of the day, I decided that she's most likely on the spectrum. But then after a week or so, it became evident that there's more going on. After a few weeks, I got together with her dad on ways I could help the business. And he finally says to me that, she was born with developmental delays and went to a special school her whole life. He didn't specify what exactly the delays are and I didn't ask. He says that he basically started this business for her so that she could have a job. And that he's been struggling with her from the beginning on her responsibilities. I'm not going to offer too much of my opinion on this. I think it's very sweet of him as a parent. I understand the sentiment. And I like both her and her dad. But it's not the decision I would have made as a parent. At the end of the day, I can't change the situation. This is where I am and I need to learn how to work with it. At this point, quitting is not even in the realm of possibilities for me. I see myself here long term and I'm invested. Outside of this issue, I feel like I've made it and this is my dream job. I'm very happy. I'm not sure how to say what I need to say here without sounding awful. But nothing she does is done correctly. I've spent the last six months implementing new systems to help cut down on mistakes. And going over these with her. But nothing has improved. Her dad has told me that I'm in charge at this point and that he's told her the same and she agreed and was okay with me taking over. But he still wants her to maintain the owner title and still feel like it's her business. So I involve her as much as possible in changes. I consult her and ask her if things look okay and if there's anything she'd change before I make permanent changes. I try to talk to her on a personal level every day. Ask her about her weekend. Try and talk about pop culture or social media. Tell her about my weekend, etc. And I just can't break through. She doesn't seem to super care about talking about work stuff. Sometimes she literally just gets up and walks always when I'm talking. And I get awkward one word responses when trying to talk about non work related stuff. So I guess my two main concerns are how to better connect with her, 
I feel like we need to have a fairly good relationship, since we're working so closely together. And the second concern is, how do I get her to pay better attention to important things that need to be done? I've had several conversations with her dad on this subject and his responses are always the same. We don't know how to help her, we've been struggling her whole life. And, please don't quit. During the last conversation we had, he said, this is why I need you, to show her all of this, he's basically at a loss and hopes that I'm going to work some kind of miracle, turning her into an organized hard-working businesswoman. Bonus. I also need to learn how to handle this emotionally myself. I do get very frustrated some days at the amount of mistakes and sometimes the severity of mistakes that she seems to not take seriously. Like losing a client's $1,000 plus check this week. She just didn't think it was a big deal. I feel like I could use some advice from friends, family of individuals with delays. Anything is helpful. Thank you. It sounds like the dad hasn't done anything proactive for this girl to help her be more high-functioning. Not saying that is right or wrong, but if the girl isn't in therapy or receiving any outside help for her condition, nothing is going to change without a lot of work on your end. I'm sorry but it's just the truth. If this is really your dream job and you don't want to quit, instead of concerning yourself with how to make the situation better, think about if you can accept things the way they are. So I don't have delays, but I have volunteered with special needs individuals throughout my life. I've also had to take on more at jobs than I should have due to others' limitations. Your employer is putting you in a horrible position. He's expecting more of you than the position should entail. Is there extra pay due to you also being essentially this person's keeper? No offense to the person, but that's the position her father has put you in. It appears that this may also not be operating under appropriate accommodations for her either and is all falling on you. Edited to add you may want to read up on the doll accommodations guidelines to protect yourself as well. Special ed teacher here. I would highly recommend that the family look into hiring someone who is specifically a job coach for people with special needs. Just for some background do you have any experience working with people with disabilities? You stated you did not. What was the original job description they gave when they hired you? Were you mislead? Were you aware this would be part of your job, or was it sprung on you? If you are willing to give your region, state, country, people might be able to point you in the direction of resources to better support her. It is good you want to be supportive of her, but you really need someone specialized in this area to focus in on goals with her related to her specific needs. If she is on the spectrum then print out sheets with directions or memos in full view is great. Timetables for the daily tasks are also good. Is she more of a morning person and then gets bored? All of this is important to figure out. If it is intellectual disability then repetition is key. I don't know how great her verbal skills are so demonstrating and pictures may be useful if that is a struggle. I work with special children. You just need to figure out what works best. Evidently they want to keep you on. As such, can you sit them down and propose a division of tasks that would work better for you? It seriously seems like you hold a lot of the cards here. For the issue of talking with her, if she doesn't want to do small talk and it makes you feel awkward, just don't do small talk. I'm sure it'll take a lot of stress off both of you. For work tasks, maybe it would be more efficient to communicate via email or text message than face to face. I think something you can do is work on running the business more yourself. For example with the client lost, maybe be the one who talks to clients and does the brunt of the work, and possibly have her as the face of the company. Also losing a check isn't the worst thing in the world if she accidentally threw it out, the company just has to void that check and they can resend it. You might even say you'll pay for the shipping to show how much you value them as a customer. What's most important is try not to focus on what she thinks, if what you're trying doesn't work then you might have to try other strategies. Have you tried PowerPoints or even books or something with a few graphics to help? This is an untenable situation. Looks as if the father's well-meaning intentions cannot work. Despite what you said, you need to find another job. Either that or do three jobs indefinitely. Yours. Undoing the wrong stuff she does. Doing it again properly. This is not the right job for you. I, 26F, was the other woman. What do I do now? I live in a very liberal, open-minded area. What I mean is that a lot of folks in my city are polyamorous, ethically non-monogamous, swingers, kinksters, etc. Not saying everyone is like that, but enough that it is fairly normalized. Years ago when I was, maybe, 20 years old, I'd met an older man, 32M, at a club. He came home with me and we did what you do. We both had a great time and decide we'd like to see each other again. 
He tells me that he and his wife are a part of our local swingers community. They don't do orgies or anything but she has her boyfriends and he has his girlfriends while they remain happily married. He and I saw each other on and off for the remainder of my college days. For me, it was purely sexual. When I started getting close to someone that I wanted to actually date, I would stop seeing him and made it clear why. When my relationship didn't work out, we would gravitate back together. I moved out of the area and we didn't talk for a couple years. I moved back recently. I'm 26 now and he's 38. I believe his wife is about the same age as he is. We do the thing where we reconnect but I'm older now and more confident in myself as a woman and sexual partner. After a bit of reconnecting, I saw him and his wife at a bar while I was also at that bar on a first date. We saw one another but didn't interact because obviously I'm on a date with someone else so that wouldn't be appropriate. A few days later, I run into him on the street and we chat. I mention how we were both at the bar the other night and how through these years, I've never met his wife. He basically said yeah, let's all do drinks or trivia or something some night. Then I bring it up a few times through text but there's always an excuse or a delay. This is a lot of background so I'll wrap it up. After some brow beating, he finally admits that he's cheating on his wife. He gives all the stereotypical reasons that they're getting divorced, she cheated first, she's about to move away for a job and they'll break up, etc. Obviously all bullshit. So, what now? I found her Facebook and Instagram, but it doesn't look like she really used them but for a couple times a year. I sent her a message on Instagram giving just enough information for her to understand what I'm getting at, without going into full detail, so she can ask whatever questions she wants to know. Well, like I said, she doesn't seem to use social media so it has been a hot minute and I've received no reply or indication that she's seen my message at all. No indication s that she has even logged into social media in a couple months. So what now? Too long did not read. I was having sex with a married man for years and he finally admitted he is cheating on his wife. I tried to reach out to his wife but she doesn't use social media and I have no other way to contact her that I can think of. What should I do? Edit. When I posted about this situation earlier, I received a lot of abuse for not immediately notifying the wife, for making excuses about not knowing how to contact her directly, and of course, if you were her, wouldn't you want to know? So that's when I did my internet sleuthing, tried to connect, and sent her a private message. Now I awkwardly have folks telling me that it isn't any of my business and I was wrong to tell her. Given I've gotten both sides from some very passionate people, it'd be helpful if comments explained why they think one route is better than the other. In regards to contacting her, that cat is already out of the bag. So this question is forward-looking. You did what you can to warn her that her husband is a poss. Cut off contact with him and move on. Although, next time you see him and his wife in a bar together, maybe you should say hi and introduce yourself. Personally, I think you did the right thing by reaching out to the wife. I'm not trying to stereotype but a lot of men use this same tired ass story about how they are going through a divorce or are about to get a divorce or my wife and I have an open relationship. I'm guessing you probably began to scrutinize the timeline of how all this happened and when, where the two of you were hooking up. And realized that he had been lying to you this whole time. A lot of people will tell you to stay out of this this. But if he is telling the truth there should be no foul. But if he is lying his wife deserves to know. He came home with me and we did what you do. You played Monopoly until you landed on Park Place, which the bastard had bought and put several hotels on, making you flip the board and swear never to play Monopoly again? So, what now? I found her Facebook and Instagram, but it doesn't look like she really used them but for a couple times a year. I sent her a message on Instagram giving just enough information for her to understand what I'm getting at, without going into full detail, so she can ask whatever questions she wants to know. Move on and cut the guy completely out of your life. Move on and drop it unless she contacts you back. It really isn't your business and you don't truly bring much help to the situation though you mean well. Op, I think you did the right thing by informing his wife. What he did is, non-ethical polyamory, i.e. cheating. Dot. PSA. Here's a suggestion that could help you and others reading this in the long run. When someone tells you that they are in an open relationship or part of a swinger community or just working on getting divorce, ask to talk to the wife so that all three of you are on the same page regarding the situation. You do nothing, just wait till she responds and answer her questions no more than that. No more contact with her or the man, no meeting personally, nothing, remove yourself completely from that situation and move on, 
you don't need any of that in your life. You've reached out the best you can with the information you could find on the internet, what else is there to do? I wouldn't recommend digging even deeper to find a phone number or personal email, it's a bit of an invasion of privacy. I do want to ask, how much of this is coming from a place of altruism and how much is coming from a feeling of guilt that you may have been complicit in this man's cheating? You have to forgive yourself for your part in this on your own terms. You warned her, now move on otherwise it looks like you have an agenda. Fiancé and I tussle over keeping a serial cheater as a guest at our wedding. There's a girl, 33, F, and she's a problem. Without going into too much detail, she has slept with and had years-long affairs with several of the men that will be at our wedding. I've, 35, F, known her for 8 years and we never really got along. She has burned every bridge that connects her to anyone, including me with her alcoholism, selfishness, and rude behavior. She even tried to hook up with my fiancé, 40, M, at one point. He didn't act on it, I was there, and I shut that shit down pretty quickly. My fiancé and I have been in a relationship for seven years. Lived together for the last five. We've both been married before but neither of us has ever had a wedding event. I don't want her at our wedding at all. I don't want to watch her get sloppy drunk. I don't want to make my other guests uncomfortable. I don't want to look at anyone who's tried to have sex with the man I'm marrying. I don't want to be uncomfortable or nervous that she's going to act out or worse. Try to talk to some of the men who she has slept with in front of their wives. God forbid. But I've capitulated and allowed her because she is unfortunately in a LTR, 8 years, with the groom's childhood, closest, friend and man of honor, 41, M. Man of honor and fiancé have been friends since they were young teens. There was a stipulation upon us getting together that I would not come between their friendship, never been a problem before. I told my fiancé today that I wanted to have certain people leave after dinner service and have an after party where I was able to let loose and be myself and that I wanted her to be one of the people that left. And he totally shut me down. He started saying that the best man and her are a package, and that there's no way he's letting his friend feel bad for the comfort of anyone else on his special day. He would rather not get married. I felt like I was compromising already, but it wasn't enough. I made an appointment with my, mostly my, and my fiancé therapist because I feel we are truly at an impasse. To be clear I love the man of honor, great guy, just with the wrong girl. You can see the relationship slowly killing him to be honest. So I feel slighted and fiancé does too. He keeps repeating how long he's known his friend and that he doesn't want to hurt him. How can I get her gone cause I don't want her there the whole night, when having her leave might miff the man of honor? How would you handle it? When the groom and I talk again, I'm hoping to have discovered a compromise that will make the situation more bearable. ETA. Her presence will not just make me, but also several guests very uncomfortable, including another groomsman and bridesmaid, who will likely leave early on their own if she doesn't. I care about them a lot so I really don't want that. Update. After sleeping on it and hearing the varied opinions here I think what we really need to do is figure out what the marriage ceremony and relationship mean to us both. We already live as if we were married but in truth we just aren't, and there may be legitimate reasons that things should stay that way. I appreciate the advice and viewpoints as it made clearer to me how different values can make a big difference in how things are viewed and proceeded. He started saying that the best man and her are a package, and that there's no way he's letting his friend feel bad for the comfort of anyone else on his special day. He would rather not get married. And that's the actual fucking problem. It's a big one. Who does he prioritize in that moment? Damn. He straight up said he wouldn't get married to conserve the feelings of his best friend over this girl. Do you not see just how majorly fucked that is? It's your special day too and you're already conceding and even letting her come. All you asked is that she not to attend a certain event. I want to say you should be the most important person in his life but he just made it clear that position has already been taken by the best friend. He would rather not get married. That's a pretty stark statement for him to make. Marriage is by nature placing your partner at the top of the totem pole in terms of significance but here he is stating explicitly that the feelings of his best man trump that of the actual bride to the point he'd rather not marry. What does that say about the dynamic and the foundation it is built on? It's sad. Your partner is willing to throw his life away with you in order to coddle his best friend and avoid having to give his best friend the real talk. He is dating a pretty awful person. Honestly, that isn't the kind of friend I would want basically an enabler, but your partner is taking it to pretty perverse extremes.
Just tell him that you'll not be her nanny and you'll not clean up after her mess and that as she gets drunk drunk the best man will take her home. Just trust that she'll be a shit person. Who lets their best friend get into a relationship with a serial cheater? I pimp slap my one friend for just thinking of doing some stupid ass shit like that. Jesus. Now fuck how can you call yourself bros and then lets him get serious with a girl you know gonna cheat on that man. Now fuck fam I'm disappointed in your husband. But fam the answer is both of you go talk to your husband's therapist. I read you scheduled an appointment but is it for both of you? If he brings up his friend you say what you told us you have no problem with his friends is that cheating female his with. Fam just have a conversation with your husband. His focus is on his buddy but yours is on his buddy's gf. So try to make him see what you're trying to shoo him fam. Look if many of the male friends cheated with her then how is she the only one that is blamed? Why is she looked on as a horrible woman that sleeps with everyone? But the men that she sleeps with are blameless and are looked on as completely fine? I honestly don't think you should give a crap about her. I'd make sure the best man knows he better keep an eye on her and that he needs to have someone on standby to take her home if necessary. Your fiancé should make it plain that you two don't want to have to think about her. And you need to let all those other men and this woman manage their own relationships. You really have no clue how many possible cheaters you have on your guest list. Or gamblers, or addicts, and so on. You knew it was a condition going into this relationship not to get in between your boyfriend and his friend. I suggest you suck it up and enjoy the train wreck this woman is.